Today, we are going to talk about four crucial mistakes that you must correct in order to rank up in Pokemon Unite. Let's go. Yo guys, how's everyone doing? This is your guy Assassin Dave. Welcome back to the Foreign Famous Family again. Today we're going to talk about something really interesting. The four major mistakes that a lot of beginners make that's actually stopping them from ranking up. Now after I point out those four things, you can try to check boxes to see if there's one or two or three things that you're actually doing that's stopping you from growing. Now once you correct them, and trust me, they're really easy to correct, most people just were not conscious about those mistakes that's actually stopping the team from winning the game. So once you know about those mistakes, you can quickly correct them and start working on yourself and really become a constructive member for the team. And you will see yourself rank up really, really fast. Before we get started, make sure to drop the like, subscribe, and turn the bell on to all notification bells so you don't miss the coolest, the greatest, the baddest content in the world of Pokemon Unite. And remember to join my daily six to eight hour live streams on Trovo.live with the link in the description. I start streaming about 6 p.m. Central Standard Time all the way to midnight every single day. So make sure to go come join us and follow me on Trovo. With that, Let's get it started with our first point of the day. Now the first point of the day is actually just zero understanding on the meta, on knowing who to go where is the best. Or, you know, if you're playing a character that might be most beneficial to go to the silent, but you have to force yourself to go to the jungle. And worse than that, just completely beat an ass when somebody asked already that they're going to jungle and you decided, nah, I don't really care. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a character um, and I'm gonna go jungle no matter what. Even if I have a teammate in the team that already signaled they're going to the center position or going to the side lane first ahead of you and you still wanna pick an inferior pick that go to the same position. In this particular match, I actually picked Greninja or signaled that I was gonna go center position at the beginning of the match like I do every single game. If you watch me on live stream, if I happen to play my master smurf solo queue, first thing I do when I go into the game is tell my teammates exactly where I'm going, what character I'm picking right off the bat because I'm playing on mobile, I can do that really fast. But in this particular game, after I do that, I went to set something up and when I come back in the game, sure enough, I got a Zero Aura who happened to fight the same position and start stealing everything. The problem with this is you're gonna delay not only one position, but most likely two to three positions because he decided to go Zero Aura no matter what and come to my jungle. Not only did he ruin the bottom lane, which is the Cinderace lane, it's gonna be really weak going against two people. That's why Cinderace is extremely underleveled. He also kind of ruined my lane, also ruined his own position. You can see right now, I'm only level five at eight minutes into the game, where at this point, a regular jungler would already be around level seven or level eight, you know, by the second rotation of your jungle. So the first mistake a lot of people make, what's the best way to correct them? It's actually by watching live stream, watching videos, go watch some tournaments, ask me any questions on those live streams, we'll explain them. So the current meta, in the center position, in the jungle position, I would call in traditional traditional MOBA, you usually have Cinderace, Greninja, you have Talonflame, those characters go into the center. And when you're talking about a character like ZRR, like Lucario, mainly going to the top lane, you're not going to the center position because ZRR is actually fairly strong in lane, right? You can actually steal your jungle, steal those wild Pokemon fairly early, thanks to your skill too. And you can pick those characters that you want to play, whatever Pokemon that's your favorite, but remember, to at least follow the position. If somebody already asked, they're gonna go to the center position ahead of you. Try to be civil and go somewhere else. Like if you have to play, let's say Garchomp, go ahead and do it. It's your game as well. I mean, I'm, I can't guarantee Garchomp is gonna have the best room to help you rank up if that's your goal. But at least go to the position that you most suited at, which is a side lane sometimes or center position sometimes, and do not force the position that people already asked to go. All right, guys, the second major mistake a lot of players makes, and this goes to not only beginner players, but even veteran Pokemon Unite players, which is looking at your minimap. Most of the players, when they play Pokemon Unite, the only information that they see is the center of their screen. You know, if you notice, there are actually a lot more tools that you have available for you that you can look at, that you need to look at. Number one being the minimap on the top left corner of your screen, or somebody may set it somewhere else, but it's the minimap. You want to look at the minimap and see at least where your enemies are, where your teammates are, or pay attention to your teammates coming to support you, come to gank you, and support them back. You do not want to be totally ignorant and pretending nothing is happening. In this particular game, I was playing the Green Ninja in the center position. I ganked the bottom lane. Now we have a Venusaur and Aldegoss on the bottom lane. The Venusaur was very low. He went back to pick up two berries, which helped him went back to full HP. The, the Aldegoss was already full HP, but instead of it helping me or following up on my gank, on my rotation, the Elder Goss literally pretended I didn't exist 
because Uncle is mainly screen, a tiny mobile screen. He probably didn't see me or he saw me, but he decided, okay, you know, I don't know what he's doing here. Like, why is he here? Right? Like, why is he Genki? Let me go back and farm this small core fish, which I didn't even do anything on, right? The same thing goes to the Venusaur. They eventually end up dying on the bottom lane because they're totally what I call ignorant. They do not see any other information than what they saw on the main center little area of their screen. This is gonna cost you so many games if you don't pay attention, okay? So make sure that you always look at a minimap or at least understand when your jungle position, center position come to your lane, that usually means they're trying to gank. So make sure that you always look at a minimap. Actually, more than 50% of your attention in the game need to be spent looking at the, the tiny minimap on the top left corner. That's a basic for any mobile game because it's a five on five strategy game. It's very important for you to understand exactly what's going on, where are the stuff going on on the map and where do you get that information the mini map uh, just look at it or uh, glance at it doesn't matter what you do but you want to have a basic idea of where your teammates are where enemies are so you can make better judgment all right guys the third major mistakes a lot of players make in the beginning rank or in a veteran rank in a master rank solo queue doesn't matter people make them all the time which is called stealing jungle before seven minute mark okay you do not want to steal center position jungle when you're playing the silent position why because your jungler, your center position, need those wild Pokemons in order to get level nine. Why is that important? Because if they get level nine, they unlock their Unite move for most center position players or characters. If they unlock Unite moves at seven minutes, the first major objective comes up, the Rotom and Adrena, right? Doesn't matter which you contest, if you have the Unite move, it's gonna drastically, drastically increase your chance which I can almost say for certain, give you like a probably double to triple or even more chance of securing that Dreadnought because the one singular Unite move, the ultimate skill, the enemy do not have. Now, if you're playing a character, just happen to steal some jungle camps from your jungle player, a center position player, what happens is you will delay their ability to reach level nine by seven minutes. And if they don't do that, guess what? If enemy happen to have it, you lose the first Dreadnought, you probably lose the first Rotom right after that, and they start a snowball, and by the time you're entire enemy team is level 12, you're probably all stuck at level 8, you don't even have your Unite move, you start losing more and more, the game is over, just like that. So when you're playing the game, solo queue, duo queue, trio queue, it's very important for everyone to understand, pre-7 minutes, the first Drano is probably the one of the most important objective in the game, and in pre-7 minutes, you do not want to steal any jungle wall Pokemons in the center area. The, the most hurtful thing to do as a player in the game is when you die in lane, and you already kind of lose a lane, and you come back alive in the first like one minute, one minute or two minutes or so, and your first reaction is, let me go to the jungle and see what I can find there. Not only did you lose your lane, you basically also screwed your entire team up because you screwed the center position player. They're not able to reach level nine, the rest is history. So if you lose your lane, just go back to your lane and try to find farming your lane. Do not go to the center position. That's the worst decision you can ever make. Basically, within the first three minutes of the game, do not try to steal jungle. It's literally the last thing you wanna do, okay? Try not to do that and you'll have a much better chance ranking up. All right guys, the last major mistakes a lot of beginners make in the game that stop them from ranking up is actually zero understanding on any objectives in the entire game. They just don't know what's going on. I mean, sometimes I just wonder what just happened to the tutorial that they did. I think everybody did a tutorial where, you know, there's something called Rotom, Dreadnought, Zapdos, right? At what time they spawn, maybe they just all gave it back to the game. You know, it's very important for you to understand that at what time those major objective comes up. There are three timers that you want to pay attention to. I'm talking about the first Strena, the first Rotom, and the first and only Zapdos in the game, okay? The first Strena comes up three minutes into the game when the clock hits seven minutes. That's when you want to rotate to Drena. You don't always have to go there, but it's a generally a good practice to go there as a team. Because this is what happens regarding Drena. This is why it's so important. The team who secured the Drena, the first round especially, usually grants everybody an actual level. An actual level straight up. Now what that means is, you will basically have an entire team who unlocks your Unite move ahead of your enemy. How game changing is that if you don't understand? Is basically, if you unlock your Unite move ahead of your enemy, that means you can then go ahead and take your uh, Rotom by the next objective, or straight up force enemy away from the defense though and take one or two towers right off the bat. And this is gonna give you more experience, more leveling up against your enemy, more contrast, so you can win every single team fights following on forward. 
it's so important that you understand that, okay? So if you're at top around like 240 minutes into the game, around like 740 on the clock, you want to be rotating bottom lane because in 20 more seconds, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Draenor is coming up, okay? You want to make sure you have the number advantage over there to help your team. Now, in this particular game that you're watching right here, even though I stole the early game jungle, I kind of destroyed enemy jungler, but somehow the enemy entire team, they understood the most basic fundamental objective of the game. You can see around three minutes, we had five people on the enemy side on the bottom lane contesting Draenor. I killed all four of them, but it got myself low, which means I have to go home and get myself ready and come back again, but they still have five. Whereas my team, the Talon Flame just sit a spot on the top lane and the Zero Aura and they just did not move at all. They sit on the top lane and did not move a muscle. I don't know how they did that. I don't know how somebody can just go to the lane from beginning to end and never move. Like, like why are you playing a MOBA? You should go play something called Candy Crush where you do one thing at a time. You know, like you don't have to rotate at all. In MOBA, the reason why it's called a strategy game, the reason why it's fun, the reason why so many people can play the same character for thousands of games without feeling bored, is because every single game is different. There's so many lanes, so many, you know, you can rotate to different games and people react differently to your rotation. It's so much fun doing that. Okay, it's very, very important for you to understand the objective because this gives you a sense of meaning, a sense of purpose, a sense of like, oh, this is what I'm doing in the game. Otherwise, you don't know where I'm going, you just don't know where you're going throughout the entire game, just going blindlessly everywhere on the game. You're like, oh, why am I losing? Like, why am I losing all the objectives? Why is enemy three levels ahead of me? Because you're not contesting objectives. Now, you can see towards the end of the game when Zapdo spawned, right? I was able to kill the enemy team a few times, but again, I have upper limit on what a singular person can do. Look at the tail and flame the entire time at the remaining two minutes. The tail and flame just sit in enemy jungle and farmed. He did nothing but farm over those one or two points that make no difference in the grand scheme of things, okay? The last two minutes, if the enemy, if one team who secured the Zapdos, they usually give them an instant, usually. When I talking about, when I say usually, I mean like 90%. Give them like 500 points, or they can go to the enemy base and score 500 points. But the team who tried to score those 100 or 20, 30, 40 extra points, how is that gonna change the game? How is it gonna help you win the game? Think about that. Look at the Talon Flame this entire game. Just sit top lane. Yeah, you can farm the 40 points. But Talon Flame as a character is mostly known for the insane damage on the fly. If he comes over here and he just used the fly, he can steal the Zapdos and guess what? You secure the victory for the game. Any character you play, anyone who has the Unite move does the same amount of damage. And in this case, our Talon Flame had everything. He just refused to move. He think he's doing the right thing. In fact, those type of players are the players who probably complain to the entire Mike Feed streaming and be like, my teammates are a noob. Look, I'm scoring all these points, but look what they're doing. You know what your team is doing? Your team is trying to fight the objective so they can win the game, you know? So what you can do as a not being a noob is actually come to those objectives and help secure those objectives instead of trying to score like five, 10, 20, points it's insignificant to the overall grand scheme of the game now there's some kinky strategies we talk about five man base steal strategies that you can do in the game that that but that's a five man you know if you understand how to do that if you watch our videos and, and try to utilize in the game and the, for you to do that they have to usually fulfill that also usually you have to fulfill a certain amount of conditions in order to do those strategies in a, in a solo queue duo queue trio queue or even in five man a lot of times the game are pretty even when we're talking about an even game those Zapdos are gonna be the most game-changing objectives you have to take. It's very, very important for you to not go rainbow and go steal those 10, 20 points that doesn't do anything for the game at all. Try to come back and help your team by doing what's right, by securing those Zapdos, securing this Draenor, securing this Rotom. So with that, guys, it's gonna be all four mistakes that we're gonna cover today. Are you making one or two of those mistakes? Make sure to leave a comment down below. Let us know if this video is helpful. With that, it's Sunday signing off. Love you guys. I'll see you guys on the live stream. Bye for now. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with you. Just the